Um, good afternoon, everyone. This is Kurt Doolittle and Brad Werrell with our coffee mugs for the uh, Natural Law Institute. Today is Tuesday, July 30th, 2024. We've been working on what we call our deliverables, which I guess we've now talked about our poster book or something like that. And, or, um, and so that's, uh, we feel like we need to step away from it for about a week or so. So before we go back and try to edit it, um, of course, contrary to Brad's advice, I added some extra stuff to it. <laughs> Just something I can't control myself. Over. But anyway, that's sorry. It's a willfulness. I I we put in the logic, and I'm like, if I put in logic, I've got to put in what the definition of science means, and that's fair enough. Relatively easy. Um, and so now that we finished that, we have to go back to what we call a pamphlet, which is really not a pamphlet. It's just. That's the internal project name for what is really the the logic, right? The reductive logic of, uh, of everything. Let's expansion on the deliverables that we are delivering. So you'd want to go from the, the, the what our 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 poster book is to the what we call the pamphlet, which is our logic to the science, and then you would gradually move your way from sort of overwhelming to kind of really overwhelming to oh my god that's way too <laughs> yes and um exhaustive it's the the, the, the multi-volume science book is exhaustive it's just well i mean we have to handle i wrote a beautiful i thought it was a beautiful summary today uh, uh for twitter where i explained you know uh they come to ask do you do you guys have a moral bias and i'm like well we're, we're we have we do the science of cooperation and we construct it first principles we unify the sciences we product we, we by unifying we produce a universal commensurable uh, system of measurement from there we produce decidability and then once we have decidability we apply it to jurisprudence and politics and also and economics and geostrategy whatever and then we propose a constitutions that are, that bring mankind closer and closer to consistency of correspondence with the science so that we're in a state of minimum friction both with each other and in the laws of nature and so that we produce the most beneficial outcomes um, and we moderate that we moderate that recipe in other words what our recommendations on the constitution uh, based on whatever demographic distribution and degree of institutional development people have, you know, you may not, you may require gen six generations to get from where you are to the next state. I mean, you can do surprising amount of stuff in each generation, but it it is pretty hard to pull people along or expect them to go fast. And so, while the institute is just producing a science. There is a population of individuals whose moral intuitions don't vary that much from science. And so right. uh, since that's a population and they're, they're within that population, there's a, so just so many of us rather nerdy super nerds to be able to work on it. Obviously, the Institute attracts those people because it's most accessible to them. So it's not so much that the Institute has a bias or the people here have a bias in the sense that our bias is our we collect people we attract people who have similar biases and those biases are very close to the laws of nature and so uh in other words we vary least from them which is simply interesting in and of itself but that's that's not that we have a bias we bring to the work it's that the work the work attracts people who have a certain bias because it's more advantageous or explicative to them, explanatory to them. So I thought that was a great way of explaining it. Um, uh, and so uh, how did I get to where, how, why did I bring that up? You said something, I brought that up. It was, uh, anyway, I, I brought that out because we do have a, you know, somebody asked the question. I thought it was, though I should finally answer what that meant in some reasonably parsimonious form 
Um, but anyway, uh, I was describing. Uh, we were. I was. I. I forgot how where how I got sidetracked onto that. But uh, the net result is that we are working. We're going back to working on this the logic, right? Which is again the sequence is the picture book or the poster book, the the logic, and then the science. And what you get in this in each one is very different. You get sort of a checklist so you can grok it. You get the second one. You get well. This is uh, this is the logic of the whole system. And when we get to the science, we just add a lot more detail, especially to um, things like personality and differences in intelligence variations and classes. And we just add more detail to it. I mean, uh, we bring it from a, a logic to, uh, you know, the logic to the science itself. In other words, how it works. So when I got into the, the when I touched on the said I added things to the 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 picture book right the, uh, the yep. poster book uh, i felt that I, it, I couldn't make the argument i just made unless i put the science in there uh because the the fundamental argument is that the grammar which i i said wrote another thing earlier maybe this is why i wrote it because it's rolling around the back of my mind is that um is something to do with the is it is uh, is that okay? I wrote uh, this piece on correcting archaic mathematics and algebra. And, yes, I and, read that one. That was good. And so, um, yeah, I could make a I could make a lifetime out of just correcting mathematics, right? I mean, uh, that, <laughs> that'd be that'd be a life's mission. So, uh, got a fly in here. It happens. Um, so uh, when I was working, I got to put the science in there because otherwise it's too hard to make a, cog a, a relationship between the logic, um, logic and the method without the science as as the uh, the sci the science the science as well, which is what connects the grammars and logic, right, and the method, right. You got to have the all 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 parts of that in order to make it work. So that's with it. Anyway, today I'm sorry for my soliloquy here. Um, uh, uh, today we're going to um, we're going to go back to try to uh, work on finishing the embodiment, which is basically the cognitive laws. And we've been away from it long enough that I felt that we that it's going to take it's certainly going to take me a while to ramp back up in it. Sure. Uh, I'm going to assume it takes you, yeah, despite your glorious brilliant brilliance, uh, inescapably complete memory. And uh, I, I felt like you might need the the uh, refresher as well. So I might I was thinking I would put some context together and then we would uh, see if we could look at the, where we are in that process. Right. OK. All right. That's my original state. So now that I've without further ado, without further ado, share his screen, I'm going to share my screen, uh, share. Uh, desktop two, where's desktop two? Desktop two, share. All right. Cognitive laws. So now I'm making, I wish that we could just set this up as the default position. Set you up there and there. Now everything is in one place. So Brad, you're over here. I can talk to you over there. Hi, Brad. Okay. All right. What was I just thinking? Just thinking that a lot of my insight into logic comes from understanding what's wrong with mathematics. Okay. Right. And um, so I always feel like I write these pieces on mathematics. Uh -huh. And um, I've got quite a few of them accumulated over the years. Um, and I'm always surprised how little mathematicians understand of their discipline. Hmm. They know how to I use see, I could see that being a little folio itself, that collection of essays on mathematics. Mm -hmm. just, and it, as it is, not not worked on, just just, a, just collect them all and, and put them together. Yeah, and it's and put it out there. It's like that's a good little product. 
So they, it will gather some interest. And so in that vein, I will give you a little story before we get really started. I made a post this morning that was about, it was about studying the causality and the, we're organizing a civil response. It's just an ad, come meet us in the Oktoberfest, okay? Yep. And I got a response from a guy named Friar Calvin Robinson. He what said, I mean, is that, that's so good. It's not, it ought to be fictional. It's <laughs> like the father is F.R. Calvin Robinson. That's a title in my estimation. Oh, yeah. He says, interesting, tell me more, which caused me to, this inspired me, and I thank him for the opportunity to expand upon my thinking. And I said, the, I told him what the natural law is and how we see it. We see the institution of law as the mechanism by which human beings can functionally cooperate despite our differences. We both study and organize towards such ends. And then I gave another ad to the Natural Law Institute. That's what it looks like. And so I, I, I thought it was quite interesting. You don't know who's going to respond, right? No, you never know. And so it's like this is you just be positive and engaging and, and that's positive. That's positive. Yeah, so FR is for father, but friars also use it. So I didn't I would have addressed him by a particular, but I knew I couldn't I couldn't disambiguate the uh title. Probably better to assume. Father, I, I just, I just, I said, I said, uh, Fr Robinson. Uh, Robinson's a a, a pretty good name. Calvin. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm sorry to have distracted you a little bit. No, I'm just thinking about. Um, so it's it's Fr Pastor. Reverend R. E. V. Right. Brother B. R. Uh, well, I think there are so many fucking differences. Every denomination's got a different they have to framing for the for the person who distinguished themselves from one another. Ceremony. Ceremonial leader. So, anyway. Uh now are we warmed up? I don't know, Brad. You know, I, I'm always surprised, right? I think I start out, I'm like, I'm going to be useless today. And then we get something ma magical going. And other days, I think I'm going to, there's magic going to happen. And I crash and burn. So I don't know, whatever. It's all right. We just see what happens. Yeah. Where is that? Why are you not doing that? Where are you? There we go. Okay. I have a bunch of chat GPT thingies going. So I have to make, uh, there we go. All right, so. Context. Right. I'm gonna cover this, but this is basically what we're trying to get across. Um, uh, your logic. Stable relations, representation, prediction, uh, etc. We've got to make the book's mission, the superstructure, the outline, the section, topic, title consistent, and we're sort of looking through these um, these right. different possible chapters. I have uh, come to this was an early draft. I don't think we're going to uh, follow it exactly. Um, uh, and, uh, and that's because as I was explaining to some, was this you who was, who was, I was explaining yeah. to someone the other day that, you know, we do, we do, we come up with an idea, we write a draft of the outline, then we do the first chapter and we learn a lot, which causes us to change the outline. Then we do the second chapter and we learn a lot and we say, oh shit, now I've got to change the first chapter and I got to change the outline. And then you do the third chapter. You're like, oh shit, I learned a bunch here. 
I'm going to change the second chapter, the first chapter, and the L. And it's just, and that, and that's what happens. But what's happening is the, it's like the the purpose of writing is to document your own discovery. That's right. Right. And so we were discovering the process, which has been mostly what Brad and I have been working on for the past few years, is how do you communicate this effing thing to, to people? It's so, that, well, it's, it's, a, it's only everything. So therefore, it's complex. It's only everything. <laughs> it can get confusing really easily. Yes. So... Uh, we have an introduction, who's the audience, the value of it, how we approach it, what you'll get out of it, um, how it fits into the broader scope of the work, uh, what is our goal here, and what are we creating, Yes. and what is the first principle we're trying to teach you, and then how to read this book, All right? And right. Over that. So ne the next chapter is the physics. Right, the physical laws. I think this is just introduction. So, right. Right. So we go from existence, causality in time. We go to why are these all open? Um, then to accumulation, recomb recombination, of, and assembly. Yes. Sorry, the original forces and then how they work together. Then we go to the next scale up was domains, cooperation, economies, how those groups of things work together. And then what the fuck? Um, oh my. We go to the consequence, which is the pro process, which is the resulting process, which is evolutionary economy and evolutionary computation. Oh, hello. We have some known unknowns here, which I want to cover. Um, and we have the summary, and I don't know what this one is. And this closing, right? So, I, right. Uh, theoretically, the next one would be life. Yep. Right. So, how life originates and works, uh, how it basically performs that computation. That was thankfully not too long because the huh. physics were, were setting out. The structural problem. Hold on a second, probably gonna pause. Sorry for that phone call. Then we get from life to embodiment. So we go through physical, biological, and then finally to cognitive, right? Right. And this is what we've been working on. These are just the notes. Um uh with an introduction then we start with building up cognitive science from the first principles yes right um though there is uh, just so you people know why these yellow marks are here these highlights are here is that brad and i tend to finish a chapter and then go back and finish the clarities sometimes you're not sure how to talk about something until you've drafted the whole process. So we go, we uh, draft the whole thing, then go back and revise it. Um, and so we're working on this. I mean, where's the where's the outline here? Is there an outline? No, I don't have a... And so what I did in the physical laws is once we had dra drafted the whole thing, I broke it up the the set because it's easier to work on. Besides the fact that it makes Brad's head spin and I just go googly, um, working on one page is actually one one document is much easier. But after we've uh, completed the document, we go back and we break it into sections, right? And right. so uh, biological laws, we don't have to do anything. We might have really actually just collapse that into physics at some point, because that was our original intent. And then with the cognitive laws, but I haven't separated this only into embodiment, which is neuroscience and uh, variation, which is our, our differences and biases. So uh, I haven't, I don't have an outline for this. So I'll just reiterate that I'll just go through as we go through. So we have an introduction, 
which is then we have uh, the headline of embodiment. Then we go through homeostasis, the measurement, which is the nerves um, and neurons. And well, that's a lot. How do neurons compute? Oh, I forgot how complicated this was, Brad. <laughs> well, weird thing we did this. Um, uh, the summary, right? How neurons organize right. these layers. Holy shit, we're going to break this up. How they work together. Yes. What's resulting. All right, so that's how that. Then we talk about, we go up a level and we talk about the making these measurements commensurable, which is what we call perception, right? Uh, we organize them into, we organize these measurements um, and the result is pattern recognition. And then we end up with collecting all those measurements together in what we call senses, which is the system of measurement. And it's a division of labor and how, what kind of, what senses work. And then we, those senses are then integrated together. In other words, we're just walking through the constructive hierarchy into a system of commensurability with one another. Well, a sense is it's it's internally consistent and yeah. within the sense, but we're, then when you integrate the senses, they become in uh, uh, they co become coherent with one another. Yep. And then we um, uh, uh, then those that integration results in faculties things that we can think about, which was representations. And um, we're trying that. So the senses are relative to, to one another, uh, in, in, relative individually. We relate them to one another. Then we make them relative to the mind and body, right? So we make them relative to the mind and body. And we create a series of models, the self model, the world model, and then we epis take that entire hierarchy and we distill it to an index, which we call an episode. And um, that index is what unifies uh, all those, that vast hierarchy of inputs, associations, and consistent tests of consistency and coherence into something that is addressable by memory through various means of association. It's everything is indexed together. And then we, with, once we have that, we can use intuition, which is, uh, uh, which is unavailable. In other words, we can't see inside it. So we get our intuitions from it. Um, and once we have our intuitions, we start to develop a subconscious and um, we get from that imagination or hallucination and from that, we are now. Uh, now that we've got all that put together, we can integrate that with that those understandings with incentives. So, in other words, how we respond to those auto associations and predictions, and then we consolidate all of this into a global state, right? Wow. So, so when we say it that way, it's almost terrifying how much the brain is doing in the three or so milliseconds it takes to have all this sort of work. Um, and from it, we produce a list of models. And from that combination with incentives, uh, we demonstrate behaviors. And uh, I think we've got a embodiment, homeostasis, sensation, integration, behavior, and enact enactment. Um, and then from there, we are able to choose, discover solutions, and we're able to, uh, a con when those solutions aren't obvious, like I need to move my hand to grasp this thing or uh, something of that nature, they are, we are, the lack of decidability, in other words, the absence of urgency and the fail that there's no other need to act, a lot present the mind, the, the thalamus or the regulatory system presents consciousness with a distribution of field of possibilities that for our action. And then we can then, once we're conscious of them, we can reason through them and develop a response to them, right? And that is how we and eventually release those, 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 act, those actions and then remember them 
and from the results of, of observations, uh, integrations, uh, predictions, uh, and actions, we incrementally produce adaptation. This adaptation should be modified by, yes, intelligence, etc. And then we end up with Vitruvianism, which is man is a measure of all things to man, and the body, uh, and our, since our bodies are of marginally and different systems of measurements, we can produce commensurability between individuals. So uh, the body, the, our minds and bodies are, our senses, minds, and our bodies, senses and minds, yeah, are uh, systems of, systems of uh, producing coherence, coherence with internal external states and struggling to increase the persistence of the balance between internal and external states, we call homeostasis, all right? So that's what we're trying to accomplish, this incredible hierarchy. After that, we are trying to discover uh, variations. So we haven't started that. So th this is how the brain works, the, the, you know, the brain, mind, and so we work from the senses on up. Now, as Brad, just to warm up, I, I, I think you said this affected your thinking quite quite a bit. Oh, yeah. Or, or a bit, not a, a bit or quite a bit. God knows we could not aff affect the magnificence of the mind. mind, but it probably it did affect you a little bit. What is this? What should someone expect? What are the kinds of things that you've noticed that pe other people might expect? Well, um, you think about things differently because you understand how the, the mental processes are occurring. And it allows you to uh, gloss over all the nonsense answers your brain spits out and offers you to choose among. Mm -hmm. And you squelch those voices down over time by understanding this and behaving as in this as the pattern by which you're dealing so that you're you you are less distracted by distractors that are not productive. So you you make fewer mistakes faster. Which is to say you could take the same amount of time and make the same amount of right answers because you did were distracted by such things, but it focuses down the time it takes to get those right answers. Mm -hmm. And so you it speeds up your processing speed and your adaptation. You, you notice certain things like I think you made this was made you laugh. Conscious of the difference between eye direction, head direction, and body direction. Oh my, yeah, that's something else. But which is the the basis of EMDR, right? Mm -hmm. And it's like your association with this bias has emotional overtones and physical overtones, and and mental overtones as well. So it's like this is distracting yourself from those pre-existing biases is possible, and you'll understand what it means and why EMDR works. And then the significance of that is, is, is kind of profound because it's like the, uh, your intuition can be in error because it's reinforcing a bias that is not productive. Mm -hmm. And it feels different. And so to understand that is allow allows you a freedom of operations that were not available before because you're tracked by this bias. And so you you can dissociate yourself from the biases and allow yourself to have the freedom of mental clarity to operate within a field of opportunity that is constrained to those choices which are adaptable as opposed to being biased in some direction that is not as productive. Fascinating. So, um, so it, it, I've noticed, so for, for me, I've been working on it so long, I can't. I can't remember what it's like to think the other way. But, think. Hmm? Think. 
Oh yeah, great. That was that was rude. That, that was true. Yeah, I can't remember what it was like to feel the other way or do it the other way or, or right. Or, and uh, it, the, the the issue is this: is when I'm interacting with people, I can see them going off on their bias. Yes, and I can understand what's happening, and I can put a make that stop. I can put an interrupt in there, and, and it, it gets us to a uh, cooperative state more rapidly because it short circuits nonsense. Understanding short circuits nonsense. Yes, yes, and that's okay. Do, do you find, uh, for for me? I found the world to be a lot less frustrating once. Yes. I Yes, I'm not frustrated at all. I just go, okay, that's just what this is. Right. And and the question is how I interact with it because it's like, okay, how do I process this information with this person who is unaware of what's going on right. in a manner that is satisfactory enough for both parties to achieve a desired outcome? Yes. And so it, I, I recognize that I could short circuit them faster, but it will irritate them. Yes. Because they don't understand what's going on. So you let them reel it out a little bit before you reel them in again. Yes, yes, yes. yes. And so it doesn't, it takes less time and less irritation because it's like, oh, your, your, your interactivity with people will improve, in, including yourself. Thank you. Thinking, thinking. Yes, I, what, what? For me, it, it produces. All right, there's. It's like the other side of stoicism. Stoicism is about uh, only. Uh, it's very simple. What can I do about this? If I can't do it about this, it's irrelevant, right? Right. Right. But the and so th this has. It's basically ex in insulating yourself from nonsense right uh meaning people's games and shit right um and things you can't control in the world this is the flip side which it explains the world so you do it's not so much you enter you 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 learn to ignore it and focus That's on right. it. it's That's that right. you now understand it and are not and and so you you, you dismiss it rather than ignore it Right, because you have right. That's a different function. Right. And the, the issue would be something like when you're dealing with someone and they're doing their emotional bias, you could treat it as a rainstorm and persevere and yeah. get rained on, or you could do something different to make it change the weather. Right. So where stoicism says that's not something I have control over, it should not something I bother with, you say. I I uh, do have control over the situation. Yes, but, but it doesn't have control over me. That's right. So it's like a, it's like an advanced stoicism. Yes. Okay. Very good. All right. Um, I'm glad we captured that. It's probably worth uh, pulling that out as a as a clip because that's uh, when we say, well, you're going to develop if you learn our stuff, you're going to learn mindfulness, right? Well, what is stoicism in teaching teaching you mindfulness but it's teaching you to focus on improving your virtues and ignoring things you can't change or affect um and especially ignoring things like stupid status status signals from other people or dominance expressions from others you don't have that stuff doesn't matter um <clears throat> uh but uh, i'm oversimplifying it somebody who's very sophisticated in stoicism will say well it's more than well i know it's more than that but i'm like i'm sitting here in a conversation Right. Um, so, uh, but on the other hand, it's different when you understand. In other words, it's it's yeah. much more it's much different. So my view is that you can understand things, you can dismiss things that are irrelevant, you can act to change things if you wish to, rather than uh, essentially ignore them and leave the problem unsolved. So, uh, all right. So, um, all right. So. We got that warm up. Okay. So next is I thought we what we would do is we would go through the chapter and uh and um do what we would normally do, which is basically review and find things that need clarification, etc. Because I'm not sure we could say jump in 
right. I'm asking an opinion. I don't know the answer. Um, I'm not sure we could jump in and do these without fully ramping up again. Yeah, I think that's fair. Is that right? Fair so enough. might feel like we're doing a lot of review and not progressing like this, like this right? Um, but it's it's just doing what we'd normally do uh, later in the process, right? We're just going to do it now because it helps us get context around. Good enough. But, right? Good enough. Um, here's my subconscious. Okay. My subconscious is, um, I'm going to make sure there's nothing goofy here. My subconscious is saying, I warned you, this is going to be. <laughs> it's work. It's back to the yoke. I warned you. I wish this did a proper diff, which we just show you show me just the freaking differences. Huh. This is June 9th. We've been off about a month, huh? These are just tweaks. Right. These are just tweaks that I've um that I made because the week before just before the conference, we were uh, I was worried about producing the conference content. Yes. And I think you also went to visit somebody. I did. I'm going to go back to it. Let me see. Why did I delete that? Oh, it's because I moved variation. Okay. I moved variation to the other the other page. Mm -hmm. This is eighth of June. This is more likely to be useful. Jesus Christ, is there really that much content here? It's busy. These are just corrections. I don't know. I'm going to give this a couple more tries. Okay. Let's go to this one. Wow, that was a fuck up. That's one of our fuck ups. There we go. One I, of want, uh, I want the audience to know what's occurring here, okay? Uh, this is the part where Kurt satisfies himself that we're doing the right thing. And I know that when Kurt is satisfied, I'll be satisfied. And it's okay. I just remain calm and let it go because it's like, until Kurt's satisfied, I'm pretty confident that I'm not going to be satisfied. And that's okay, too. I'm I'm good with it. All right, so it's been it's been two months since we've made progress. Okay. Uh, just significant the, writing, yeah. I think that's fair. All right, so what I was mostly worried about is see this thing here. Yeah, uh, I was worried that. Um, Early. I was worried that there was some change here, but it isn't. It's just auto saving anyway. 
All right. Yes, I think that's what's occurring. Okay. All right. So we can get rid of you. This chapter I want to go just embodiment, measurement, correspondence to the reality, and the, un, the conscious versus prediction versus imagination issue. In other words, we're not trying to get into variation, human variation, right? Uh, we're just dealing with how the brain works. How a brain works. Yeah. So, um, because we've done so much with the physics, I felt we need to do an introduction to this chapter. That okay. that's here's what we're going to tell you. Yes. Right. Right. So I don't. We need, don't need to do that until we're at the end and we've summarized it. Right? Okay. This is just some notes I made there. Oh, it's got variation in there. Where? Right there. Yeah, variation of what though? I was a. Uh, okay, just okay. Uh, the, the, I don't mean like personality, moral, but uh, I, what I mean by variation is bias. Okay. Here, this is uh, variation. In, and I, when I get over to here, I mean variation and bias, right? Okay. Uh, you're not acknowledging, so I'm worried that I'm not. Said okay. Yeah. Right. So embodiment, how the brain, body, and mind create a system of measurement. I already did this, didn't I? I don't need this anymore, do I? I don't think so. Brad actually reads quite fast, by the way, guys. Huh. I think everywhere else I do this. Nope, missed it. Oh, I see what happened. That's what happened. The dot and before enactment. Uh, sorry. Boom, boom, boom. Boom. Uh, it it, uh, it put the bulleting on. That was the problem. Oh, I did a comma there. Yep. That's nice. These need introductions, isn't it? This is sort of like a summary, right? Yeah. Oh, I see. There you go. It's the promise. That's that that's that dot 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 right there. Sorry. Um oh right there. Under introduction dot dot dot. That's your promise. Yes. Uh, so what I'm wondering is, does that I might as well put the promise here? Okay. Because I've got the closing there. Yes. Is that's the is that section right? What is this section going to do? Right? Yes. Just undo that for a second. Yes. Mm. 
Yeah, because this is the chapter. I don't know what I was thinking. Of. This is the promise, right? Okay. And this is what we're doing. And it's the promise for the section, right? Do you mean this section or the whole yes. chapter? The what? thing you're writing right now is is the section, but this the promise is for this particular section, isn't it? Yeah, but embodiment is the summary, right? I mean, if once we get to oh, I see, yes, right, okay. so then it's just one thing. So you re you re reiterate the summary or the uh, promise as the summary. Right. In the section of embodiment, and then you begin the work. Right. So we look at it as um, parentheticals, beginning and end points that re reiterative and reinforcing, self reinforcing. Yeah, somehow we have to combine these. These two things. What two things? Well, we have a bunch of series that lay it out. Okay. This is an introduction. This is the introduction. And this is what we're going to cover. Okay. All right. So you should end up with the promise here, understanding what we're going to do. Yes. Because we could take each of these, right? and put them, there's really no way to do that, put them down into here. So we have, we do cover homeostasis, right? Yes. So that, that one gets you two homeostasis. Okay. This one gets us to measurements. Right, in the service of homeostasis. This one gets us to the process. Okay. So it's commensurability follows is followed by senses. See if that is consistent up here. Uh -huh. Oh, I see it's. This is like an overview of the whole thing. Yes. What do we have that under? Okay, so we need to unify. I don't like this. We've made a promise here. We 
we should introduce the promise. We should say, that's what it defined as. You're going to understand it as. Yeah. Let me just go through it. This is sort of like basic concepts. This is what and this is how. No. This is what. We can link to subsections when we do that. Right. So, all right. So we want to. Basically, a table of contents. Yes. This is the organization of the right. the entirety of the piece, right? Yeah. It's just top down instead of bottom up. What do you mean by that? No, I'm just trying to figure out how to tell the story. We start with the necessity of. Then we uh, explain this. Then this is the process of this. Then we go into, uh, I don't think this is homeostasis measurements. All right, this is the, this is the neurological process. Right? So it's a hierarchy. It's like a developmental sequence to me, okay? Exactly. That's the organizational mechanism. We organize it by the developmental sequence, okay? Mm -hmm. and so you will be able to understand the developmental sequence as it's explained, that this is the or this is the origination of the premises that we're coming to that will conclude with consciousness. And we will explain variation, right, at a later moment. All right. Basic concepts. This explains. This is the takeaways. Yes. Huh. The really sad thing, yes. The um the function that occurs to me, so I, I put air quotes around thinking, which is within the bias, which is not thinking, right? Yes. It's not thinking and it feels like thinking. Yes. <laughs> and is indistinguishable from actual thinking by the biased person. <laughs> oh my yeah, we're, we're assisting in killing democracy here you know I hope so now you've made me proud 
Well, I'm a universal democracy. I'm not against democracy. We understand one another. All right. I don't feel we need to go into more here until we're writing the summary. Okay. I don't think we should do more there until the end. Um, it's cool, amazing how quickly this is coming back to me. Uh, I guess oh, yeah. I guess the memories memories are assisted, but when they're encoded by suffering, is that is that what we're supposed to remember from this? That sounds, that sounds right. Oh my. As the audience, we gotta tell you Brad now has two monitors. He's entered Yay. he's entered the 1990s. <laughs> Atta boy, you're rapidly catching up. I'm catching up at a greater than one year per year. Love this man. All right. Uh all right. I don't like the phrasing of it. Go ahead. The first sentence, the problem facing da-da-da is keeping the body alive. Okay, no, because I don't like the copula. Okay? The body, brain, and mind keeps the body alive by maintaining homeostasis. Okay. Well, I mean, I'm trying to position as a problem. Maybe like it's just so. Okay. Results. Function has? No, they actually are. Yes. Yes. That's all right. What positive, negative? Yep. Wait a minute.
Uh oh, I think I'm going to actually enjoy this process, Brad. After being away from it, I thought I was going to be terrified by terrified by it, but it's actually being away from it is actually beneficial. Yes, gives you a fresh view of it. Feel like I want to say something in feelings. All right. Um, now I was just working on this, and it became to me the complexity of attachments. Okay. We attach thoughts, emotions, sensations to behaviors. Um, we we say again. We attach thoughts, emotions, sensations, and behaviors. Two behaviors, right? Two behaviors and behaviors. I don't know. What do you say? And behaviors that they're, they're all attached together. The we don't have a name for that. I don't think. that natural function. But that's what you're talking about, negative that thing, right? Can It can feel bad, which is it, it's emotions and sensations, right? But they're attached to these other parts, the thoughts and the uh, behaviors. And we don't, we don't generally Think about those attachments. We suffer them because we prefer to continue the behaviors that are creating the negative emotion or thought sensation. And, and it's with the thought. Does that make sense? Finish that sentence. We attach them creating what? Our experience. It's our experience. Right. Well, where does that relate to homeostasis? It relates to homeostasis because it's like this. It's like, what are you trying to maintain in homeostasis? Right? Because you're alive and you're suffering with a negative thing, right? Negative experience. But you prefer to maintain the experience rather than to learn the thing that you don't know, right? To avoid the cost associated with the unknown, which is what do I have to do to fix it? Because it's like, it's it's a, uh, uh, what do they call diagrams? Um, Wayfinding diagram, right? Mm -hmm. What do they call their um uh no oh, fuck why did W you... it begins with the W, I think. Yes. Why does this always bother me? I'm gonna do that thing where I put a post-it note up there until the no the word sticks in my head. <laughs> but it, it is a uh shoot. You're, you 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 don't see a way out so you double down right well i understand what you're saying and i'm trying to figure out if you're saying if if we, you're what you're trying to do is inform our statement here of homeostasis or make a generalized observation that we should insert somewhere um to describe why our experience 
of homeostasis, right? I mean, this is what I think you're in of homeostasis. Yeah. But it, the, the homeostasis of what, right? And it's like, until I see a way out that looks doable, I won't do it, right? Which I have to be sufficiently motivated to change. This is going to take glasses. No, I wrote it down because I forget the word myself too much. Markov chains. That's right. Okay. Which is it if it's state Right, so and I'm gonna I'm gonna give an example here, okay? So an individual may feel uncomfortable. They may feel uncomfortable, but they don't know how to get into a state of comfort because they're distracted by the negative thoughts associated with con current conditions. Okay. So, I, I could dwell on narratives of oppression instead of working to better myself to improve my outcomes in life. However, yes. There's a cost of uncertainty and also uh, behavioral investment, right? Required. Mm -hmm. And it's like this: it's I, I, I. It's too easily to be. It's too easy to be distracted by negative thoughts and externalizing the problem to the environment. That that right there talks about the evil of this the leftists, in my mind, because they socially reinforce behave uh, thought processes which keep the people stuck in their degenerate states, and externalize the uh, harm to the environment.
Oh my. Self destruction. Mm -hmm. Yes. I don't know what it's going to do with that. It's just a statement. You're going to, I don't know, you did something there. What are you going to Twitter? Oh. No matter. Got it. Now it's recorded and now we can uh, apply it almost anywhere. So where does this, where would you put this in the book, book here? Would this go in here at all? We can put it under here. Right. Adaptive and not adaptive behavior, right? Mm -hmm. It's drivers of. I'm going to pause and get some more coffee. Yep. Okay, thank you, Brad, for letting me grab my coffee and liquid refreshment. Um, I did get something in the mail today. Oh, my goodness. Look at that beautiful mug. That is quite a beautiful mug. It's this kind of mug. I kind of prefer... See how I hold this one? Yes. The three, the three hold versus the four hold. I don't like the four hold. It makes me feel like I'm a, a retard. I need I need more fingers on it to handle it. I, I didn't I, I thought I'd get that reaction out of you. That was good. But um uh I really think it's beautiful. So my point is that ordering online does work. It's good quality. Uh, it comes quickly. They wrap this thing, this amazing ship, shipping package. It comes like this. Hmm. Right, it's not going to get damaged or broken. And it's they have a little scanning wall on the bottom so they can track it. All right. All right, so the whole process works, it's efficient it's by printify. So all our all our merch is available there. <laughs> However, I am going to uh because I'm biased, I'm going to ask for uh either five or seven more of this so I have a full set because this is my favorite. I like the I just it's the right weight. It holds properly. You know, I was actually taught this, believe it or not, the finger thing. Oh yeah. I was actually taught that, believe it or not. Uh, but that's for glassware. And it's the same for teacups, teacups. 
and coffee mugs. So I'm sorry I got a lot of that training and it's sort of stuck in it's like why I can't eat Asian food with a fork. I have to use chopsticks. It's just wrong. You know, it's just anyway. I know what a fish fork is for. You know, a fish knife is for. Anyway. All right. So I'm going to try to make another half hour. I'm going to try. Good. Miss Emma, yeah, yeah. How do I say this? Acquisition is our only behavior. <laughs> I don't know how to describe this. It's the first principle of all behavior. Right, just acquisition. I mean, homeostasis is the first principle of causality, and acquisition is the first principle of resulting behavior. life yeah okay i would say it differently life demands homeostasis yeah. Okay. Okay. Homeostasis causes acquisition. Mm -hmm. Say it again, how you said it. Homeostasis causes acquisition. No, acquisition causes it. I want to see if I let's look at causality. What's that? I want to generalize it first and then go from there. Causality acquisition is the first principle. Let's see, let's see this. I've walked myself into a box now. How so? Because there's two ways I want to describe it, and they're in competition. <laughs> what are those two ways? Yes. Yes. Oh, no. Keep on putting that is in there, and I will get mad of it every time. 
results. I love you. <laughs> Arises. Can I say it better than that? I would say just behavior itself. Don't even put all there. It's implied. Okay. Whoa. What happened there? I'm just trying, I'm just uh, trying to figure out what of the last tier is left. What's funny about that construction there? Okay. Persistence. Yeah, I was trying to get that quantum level. Um, Say for the defeat of entropy. <laughs> the interesting piece of that construction is a crescendo and a decrescendo. Mm -hmm. It's a reiteration by backwards means, right? Yeah. That works. What's interesting about it though, the interesting, the, the high point is hum, all human behavior, okay? Because before that is just behavior. Mm -hmm. and, and, and all human behavior is a specification and then reduction back to the uh, zero point. I wanna reiterate that. What's that? <clears throat> what that are we reiterating? This. Acquisition precedes behavior. I... Well, I'm, I'm trying to remember, we're working with first print. So the first principles. <clears throat> yes. So the first principle of life, right? Okay.
Okay. The only thing I like here is this. Um, yes. Okay, so you put that in there. It's just that this is so beautiful. I was in home and acquisition can exist either in No. Yeah. So obtaining evasions is 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 the avoidance of negative acquisition, which is loss. I will put that in parentheses. Yeah. Why do I love this work? You know what I like? <laughs> it's perverse. It's, it... Well, you know, it's, it's that the first time through, it's such a struggle. And right. the time through, it's like, okay, how do we, it's like, how do I say it? Then how, it's programming works the same way. And then how do I say it right? When I write a software, I like, I write it in English, right? I write it as comments. Then I go through and write it, and I'm like, oh, that sucks. <laughs> then write it clearly, but you, it's just interesting. But it's really fun to do this. It, it is, and it's the it's the the interesting function of it is this: it's communication, right? So we're we first have to reprogram our mind to be able to articulate it, and it is for an audience to oh. cog to understand it and articulate it themselves. No, 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 no. No, 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 no. No, 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 no. What are you talking about? I just hit the, the evil key. The randomizer? Yep. Oh, my God. Thank God. Update. Thank you. And I was... Just trying to pace. So we've made the point what it is, how it can where, be. Possible. Where did it come from? Yep. And uh, that it can be positive or negative. This is usually what people have a problem with. Really? Well, they, they can't, for some reason, it's hard to envision. It's hard for people to say, well, I'm trying to acquire everything. Sometimes I'm not. Well, I mean, if you're trying to requ require doing nothing, acquire doing nothing, that's still acquiring doing nothing. Or I mean, <clears throat> and if you're trying to acquire not getting eaten, you're still acquiring not, not getting eaten. That's right. So that might be a bullet point under there. Acquisition well, consists of those two last things could be bullet points. No, I think it's okay this way. I think I'd like you to keep it that way. All right. I really like that. 
I think I would highlight that acquisition is the first principle of behavior. Like this or like this? Oh, I, I like it highlighted. I think it's darker. It's just so that it pops out. I'd be good with uh, with um, with this. Yes. How about that? And it doesn't interfere with the reading. Yes, I like that better. I think we're missing something. You mean? Right. Uh -huh. I think we're missing that. Movement is the result of the desire to acquire. Mm -hmm. Yeah, demand, the demand for acquisition. Which is changing state. No, it's which, not. Which is just behavior. Mm -hmm. Movement is behavior. Right. Yeah. You want me to say that? Yeah. What I'm trying to get to is I want to get to cooperation by showing the sequence of movement to planning movement to cooperating. Right. Right. Uh, Okay, so prediction of movement. Okay, I, I'm not sure that's the right way to say it. I know I'm 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 just running with it because I I'm getting where you're going. Prediction of movement allows for acquisition with minimal movement, therefore avoiding costs of extraneous movement. Right? Yes. And I would say um, movement is, is, okay. So we're trying to get to, yes. We're, we're trying to get to, um, because this is like, uh, uh, so what I could say is all whatever emerges from movement. What I want to get to is this. Right. That's what I'm trying to get to. Right. I've got a fly in here today. I didn't leave the door open.
Okay, so look, movement, movement itself, right? Okay. No, that's okay. I'm just going to note that to myself. Go ahead, you were going to say? Movement is a... Um, movement, like specifically movement as behavior. All behavior. What? I'm trying to figure out how to say it. So it should go to all, all acquisition to behavior, right? This should be behavior. Okay. Right. It's a neurologic function, isn't it? No. All behavior evolves from movement. No image. Oh, I'm, I'm transitioning here from plants to animals, okay? You know, we're trying what, what, what really came to my mind immediately when I said that is a Venus fly trap, which senses the fly in its trap and then closes, right? Which is movement, right? Right, but, you know, I want to, I, an opportunity to tease some nitwits. Um, you know, but what's a huh. what's a microtubule? It's a way to move shit up and down a a track, right? I mean, that's what it moves stuff around a structure, whereas stuff could float around a structure, and then you create a microtubule. Now things can be guided down a structure, right? Right. So it's more efficient movement. But I'm trying to think. So if you, it's the same thing with what's happening with a cell wall is you're moving charge across a membrane, right? So I'm trying to do it at all levels. And so um, uh, so I, what we want to do is maintain that all levels yes. uh, generalization and um, behavior movement section of them. Okay. All right. So then we get a prediction. So once we have this, we've got most, once, we ha once we're here, right, we're, we've got everything other than sentience, right? Than the, the nervous system, right? I mean, you, you do need a, do you need a, you don't need a nervous system to move, do you? Uh, you don't know, because you can get cilia. Why does cilia move? <laughs> That's well, just funny shit right there. <laughs> You know what's that little thing that's got the one tail on it? I, not not this not sperm. <laughs> <laughs> oh my! Other monoflagellates. But it has a little motor in the bottom of it. Oh, it's microtubules. It's trying. It's uh, proteins and. Uh, the microtubules within the cilia. Okay. Mm -hmm. It's just, uh, it's a chemical process rather, but you know, uh, microtubules arranged in a circle around two central microtubules. Now, essential for, yeah, so basically, um, uh, it's, you, it's transporting charges down it, but there's no, so this is the part. Of, the coordinated action of a diode motors along the length of the X and results in a wave-like whip, right? Bending a straight. That's fucking fascinating. It's just a charge moving. Yes. Yeah, but, but what causes the stimulation in the first place? Concentration, yeah. Calcium levels. That'd be the penicillin. Penicillin right. can regulate cellular movement. It's just the produce the production, the production of chemistry. All right. Yes. It must happen pretty fast. Interesting. So cilia. All right. So, so nervous system is is reactive tissues, right? Yeah. So it's reactive tissues that are um, variable in their dynamic function is behavior, right? 
Right. It's the problem is the coordination of them. So you have uh, the 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 problem. What is the transport system that gets the signal to the thing that expends energy? Transport system, and it can be anything. It could be just an open pore. Exactly. So in a cell, it's just it's just kicks off some. What is this? So a chemical a chemical um, uh, concentration could do it. Changes in the intercellular capital level, right? But how does so? What causes causes the uh, changes? What can cause can cause the intracellular calcium calcium? Why cal, why am I having trouble doing two things? Yeah, you am. Yeah, uh, I read at the same time. Levels in a cell for is it what stimulates huh? I swear to God, it's interesting questions. I know this. It's the same thing as every other fucking cell in the world. The inside it, the concentration is tightly controlled. Yeah. That 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 see, that's what drives me nuts. What's that? Release through intercellular stores. Okay. This is the same thing as every other cell does. Right. Uh, so it opens up the gates. It right. Opens up the gates and lets it out. Yeah, but what is the decision? Uh, okay, so they're responding to signals, right? There's signals that are driving it. So, yeah. Okay. Okay. So, so is a single celled just wanted to grab a context. <clears throat> it's an animal cue. Uh, that's the first principle. It's, it's, yes, it's acquiring. Yeah, I know, but why? But why what? Oh. Yeah, but why? Damn it. Killed him. Good. <laughs> Acquisition by avoidance of unnecessary costs. <laughs> Kurt just dips acquired the cost of the fly. I squished him between my fingers. He popped. <laughs> All right. Okay, okay great. Doesn't have a brain, right? No brain. No brain. It has one cell. Let me know the answer already just by asking the question. Behaves. Right. Right.
Yep. <clears throat> yep. Animals, though, they're animals. Mm -hmm. Which is their rudimentary nervous system, right? That is the most rudimentary nervous system. The reflex. Yeah, but how is the information? Is there, do we know? That's interesting. This is what I love, AI. For a signal cascade, yeah. It's the same as a neuro neuron. It's the same exact thing. It's just a um, ultra um, undifferentiated neuron, right? Mm -hmm. And so I've been saying all along that a neuron is just an ordinary cell that has learned to specialize in information transduction. Information transformation. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I know. I know it's not silly. All right, so they just, it's just. Chemical. Right? How do we get this? How do we construct that again? Well, I'm just thinking of how we construct it. This yeah. is so far yes. now get from be we have to get from behavior to movement right uh and so the question is whether we say all behavior can sit originated with movement or movement consists of all behavior evolved from movement okay so i'm going to think about plants for a minute okay okay oh you got a plant it has two it has two um Taxic functions, right? Which is photo tax. What, what is it? There's geo taxism, and is that's not the right term. Tropisms, right? Is tropism is the most rudimentary form of movement by life, which is phototropism and geotropism. So the root grows down to the earth by geotropism, and it, the, the leaves grow up to the light by phototropism. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't move itself, but it grows is its form of movement. Growth is a form of movement. Yes. That's really good. So you you adjust, you acquire by movement, but growth is a form of movement of plants. I would put of plants because it's, yeah. But it's tropism, right? And so chemotaxis is what they're talking about in the, um, the, 
paramecium, chemotaxic, is, is a form of tropism, right? Acquisition of behavior, right? We want behavior. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> Which this could include transport. Yes. Acquisition behavior. Uh, venue prediction of movement. Which is, is that's advanced. That's the paramecium is predicting movement, which is. Mm -hmm. I don't know the right term to use there. Before the work. You're making me work now. Well, it's how do we build this structure, this art, this this construct? Yeah. So Okay, ready for this? Taxism versus tropism. Taxism involves whole body movement. Tropism involves growth or bending. Taxism in animals, tropism in plants. Okay, I understand this. I'm not connected. No, so, it's like, so behavior includes both tropism and taxism. Does that make sense? Mm-hmm. Prediction of movement is a taxic function. Yeah, I, I gotcha. I'm just, it's called behavioral biology. So it's like this is the 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 taxism requires prediction. Okay, I gotta take I gotta note this then because it's uh, I'm not able to hold it all in my head. Sorry, it's all right. Um, let's go over the terms again. So movement, right, includes. Taxism, tropism, and taxism. Put tropism first. What are tropism and taxism? Taxism is whole body movement. And ta tropism is growth in the direction of. That's close, brother. Okay. So we got to go lower. Taxism, taxism is predictive in its functionality. So tropism is plants, and you. It just requires uh, 
growth responses. It's yeah. direct stimulus response mechanisms. Yeah, that that that's that's not clear enough. Trophism is growth in the direction of. It requires the knowledge of. It requires a systematic in knowledge. Yes. Of the of a of the pursuit of a resource. Right. Now we got to. Wait, 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 I would say acquire there just because it's it it leaves the positive and negative function. Yep. To acquire, right? Yeah. Right now, um, we got to get down to. We got to get down to. Intracellular. Okay. Right. So we have. Oh, that's just funny shit right there. So organelles, right? You want to put L organelles here? We'll put it intracellular. But it includes organelles and um, I don't even know what you'd call these microtubules. They're not organelles. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, in this sequence. Huh. <laughs> I love it when you talk to the AI. <laughs> in this sequence. Yeah, give me a hand here. It's just easier for it to search its memory than it is for mine. Oh yeah. Put put um some question marks after organelles. Find an organelle. An organelle is like a Okay. It's like what? An organelle is like a bit of an of a cell that cannot exist on its own. That has cell like functions. But it has a has a um specialization in function. Yeah, there's something before. There's something here. What do you got? Okay. Okay. Oh, that's very interesting.
Spectrum of movement. Okay, that's close enough. That's what I was looking for. There you go. Yeah, that's what I was looking for. Where were we writing? Right there. Behavior. Oh, shit. It's because I wasn't writing it anywhere but there. It's quite an interesting diversion, isn't it? Oh, I was writing over here. That's writing it on a, on your note. Yeah, yeah. Where the hell was I doing that? And this is Saito. I like that um, that detail that it made. CPT four made. Maybe I can just. We'll use the list, but not the uh, details. You know. Mm -hmm. Well, this made my day. Why does this make me feel warm and fuzzy inside? <laughs> it's like this. It's like shining a flashlight in a, your your great uncle's closet and finding the trophies from the war, man. <laughs> right? It's like, look at that crazy shit. That works. I know what I want to explain, right? But because we've got to cover the whole fucking... Yes, it's all the time. It's like, how do I generalize this to? Right. So I think we're going to do this as. I like this. I like that. Just do that range of things that are these these, the the first section, the first, right. Yeah, I'm. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not. Well, the question is, how? What order do I put them in? Oh, I would start with the simplest ones: cell wall, cell walls, membranes, cell cell membrane. You don't need the uh, cell wall. I'm just using intercellular transport. Yeah. Oh, I realize I figured out what's going on with my typing. No oh, yeah, way. what is that? It's it's having a little extra hard time problem tonight, and for some reason, lights bothering my eyes. And no. more because I'm stoned. I don't do those things because I'm too old. Oh my! I'm just cutting you off at the pass. Your attitude is atrocious, sir. Okay, you see where, there you go. That's a weird word. Light, I'll just do that touch. Yes. Yes. There you go. You go into um, complex prediction. That's prediction.
Mm. This one's good. Yeah. Hello? Okay. Um, but then I'm going to go out to Roosevelt Lake because apparently just where I took a picture of, which they mm -hmm. said if it's what they think it is, it's a very rare bird. Well, very good. So I'm going to go see if I can see it. Have some fun. But, right. So, yeah. So cross it and then I'm just going to continue on after that. All right. Be back when the sun comes out. Okay. Right. See you later. Pardon me. I couldn't think of anything funny to say other than, do you want to help us to define biotaxes in relation? You know, I didn't think it, I thought she would just think I was being ridiculous. So <clears throat> she, she might not be too far off. <laughs> <laughs> so it's a, what's in because it is this is a very interesting process because I agree with your your premise. It's like this universalization of the thought processing mm -hmm. right? and then codifying that is quite an interesting little process. This, this it goes from um, automatic to predictive. Do it. There's a C in electrical, believe it or not. Always, always is. Mm -hmm. Except when I type it for today. Except for those times. See, this is this is interesting. Peristalsis is interesting because it's like this a re reflex. Mm -hmm. Response to stretch by contraction. Yeah, but where is it in here? Somewhere in here. It's reflex. It's before there, it's down in here. No, it's not a year. It's not a year. Because that's an organ function, okay? Peristalsis is an organ function. It's not. It's not taxes, okay? It's. It's a. Uh, it's a. Uh, Organ function. So we should be in here. Because this is cellular, right? Yes. This, this is multicellular. Yes. Which is funny because the, the peristalsis is is uh beat doesn't move the whole body, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's missing. It's missing the what I the one I'm most interested in. What's that? Intracellular trans transport. Oh, you mentioned it before. This is organization.
the detection. Ah, peristalsis is interesting. You know why? Because it's a, it's in, it's too much. It detects too much, and therefore it squeezes it out. Fascinating. Does this really need to be here? I don't think so. Because we're really in here. This is cellular motivations, but it was like multicellular coordination, right? Right. We want a multicellular coordination. That's multicellular. This is gro tropism is growth, right? Yes. So you, peristalsis requires sensation, okay? Tropism requires sensation. But they all require sensation. Everything after that requires sensation. Well, the minimum requires for Texas. Uh, I don't know why I find it so amusing to watch you talk to the machine. Nah, that's funny too. I don't think so. You know, but I want to know why. It, it's sensitivity. What you call, what they use the for tax is sensitivity. Huh. That's a very funny word right there. Tax. Okay. Because it's like uh, syntax. Right? I think syntax is all the time. It's called marriage. It's called, it's called divorce, alimony, and child support. <laughs> I'm sorry. Fucking A. I was talking to my uh, my rep in Washington State today, mm. and it's just like everything else. Fucking sweetheart, great to talk to, helpful, advantageous, you know, communicative. Right. The exact opposite of everything in the north northeast. That's nice. That made you happy, I think. It did. It did. I I, I just. Just be pleasant and fucking helpful. It's not that goddamn hard. And also, a weird thing like that. My bankers, the um, utility company, my telephone company. I got all I got was native, um, you know, native English speaking Americans on every single one of those calls. So and this is um it, it goes to overload, okay? Mm -hmm. They're getting paid enough to do their task, 
and they're not being overloaded by underclass. Yes. This is interesting. So I'm I'm doing I told Claude to tell me about taxes and syntax. Okay. Organized movement responses. Taxes is organized movement responses to stimuli. Syntax rules governing the structure and sentences in language. Directing the flow of language and meaning versus directing the flow the movement of organisms. I want to hear that again. Syntax directs the flow of language and meaning. Taxis directs the movement of organisms. Mm. So stable relations, right? Syntax helps the processing of linguistic information versus involving processing environmental information for animals. And it has to do with um, there you have it. What's the Latin for tax? Okay. It's another taxes term. Taxes, yeah. Pro pro taxes meaning arrangement or order, right? Sin taxes is together arrangement and order. Taxes is arrangement order position from Greek. Syntax, mm -hmm. emphasizing arrangement of elements in relation to each other. Taxes in biology, focus on arrangement or orientation of an organism in response to stimuli. And that, but they both have to do with stable relations. So it's touch and order. Goes starts out with touch. Yes. It's a putting together and then into ordering. Fascinating. So I'm trying to organize these now. Yeah. Um, and so I've got, I'm, this is the one I'm. Uh, that one you're stuck on? This is the one I, this is the one I cared about. Yes. Trophism, growth, growth, taxes. Now this is the question is where does this, this go? Because that can go. Does it? It goes in. It goes there. It goes where? I like it where it is. I didn't get them. I guess. What? I guess I didn't get that fly. He's back. Oh shit! Anyway, um. You know, I, 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 I go with me for a minute here. All right. Hmm. Because this is, this is, okay. yeah, that, 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 that's right. That works. That works. But it's like, it's, it suggests that um, tropism is a form of taxes, which it is not. No, I, I was just trying to draw the elevate the, the order of complexity. Yes. Element, right? So you got us. You can do taxes with uh, single cells. There's multiple cells. There's multiple cells, right? Okay. Uh, uh, there's um, uh, nerves, nervous system, right? Okay. 
uh, nervous system. Is this so, so you might do better to break it out um, as bullet point series so that each one is, is divided cleanly. So like cellular, right? And then multicellular. And then nervous. Well, so this is this is pre-cellular, right? I don't know that they exist pre-cellular in any That's meaningful way. Idea. I don't think they, well, I mean, that's a great question. I know the answer is going to be, we don't know. Well, if we haven't discovered them, they don't exist so far. Well, it's the question is, what was the order of? I understand. What was the order of development? <clears throat> because, you know, oh, got to hit the enter, got to get the go button. Every time. It's like paying the hooker. I damn, I'm sure that I'm gonna sneak that one in and get a response out of you. I can tell by the sideways look. Yes. I have the complexity pointing in there, guy. Okay. Yay! So just to, you can put them be after the cell membrane. Yep. I think peristalsis goes in before, like after reflex. Mm. Stalsis. What is it? Precede and antecede? It's a... Yes. Uh, what's the question? After. It's going to say after. Yes. Just like me. What? Just like me. <laughs> You're right. <sighs> oh, I see it. It screwed that up again. What a weird query set. Just a very, very tumbling set of queries. You're right. Thank you, Kurt. Yeah, now we've got to go back and just okay. pull, just leave it at sensation and pull peristalsis out as his own subset of reflexes.
Brad, you make me work here. The heart itself is a um on that level. That would be one word, gastrointestinal. Cardiac function, it falls in there. Is there actually an effort to, I think we did this before. I said, the heart contracts, but is there any positive muscle to it? No. So pressure driven when it empties out it creates an empty uh has a negative pressure compared to the uh the source upstream it's involuntary muscle contraction autonomic Ways voluntary bolt. I have no freaking idea. Pretty sure you did it. I'm gonna take. I bet you after we're done, it takes me ten minutes. <laughs> <laughs> and I was younger. I could catch it most of the time. Hmm. That's what I did. I highlighted voluntary for some reason instead of nervous. <laughs> That's all right. At least you understand the problem of uh, behavior.
missing one. Conditioned. I was look, thinking of conditioned when we were talking about learned. Thank you, B.F. Skinner. We've got one other one. We've got involuntary, right? Homeostatic. That's probably the ones we're missing. You know, we did pretty good work. <laughs> <clears throat> I'm getting tired, Brad. We've been at it for since 5, 30, 6, 30, 7, 30. Okay, yeah, almost three hours. Wow. Well, I looked at the clock. It was an hour and a half ago. So. How about that, Kurt? God, we do good work. All right. Now i got to go kill a fly. I haven't, I haven't eaten anything for dinner yet either. Make something to eat. So, uh, and you're going to go do something with your, oh, your wife is out. Your wife is going. He went away. All right. So, so let's. I'm, I'm on my own. I'm bacheloring it is for the moment. And that's fine. I appreciate the good work. And it was kind of an interesting intellectual pursuit. So we'll look forward to um, connecting again on Thursday, I suppose. We will. Um, I've gone out of focus again for some fucking reason. Oh my, minutes. Kurt. Because I rocked back. It is. There we go. Bing! Like you're doing a little. Yeah, it was like instantaneous. Well, yeah. Right. Everything. Um, right. Hey. What? Can I talk to the guys for a second? I was just about to ask. I, I really would appreciate it if you um, nice people paying attention to this would kindly hit the subscribe the like and the notification bell if you want to know when we're going to be doing these things. And then you can leave your comments below and talk about the wonderful nature of this work. <laughs> Thank you very much. All right, again, it's Kurt Doolittle and Brad Worrell for the Natural Institute. It's Tuesday, July 30th, 2024. Thank you very much. I hope you enjoyed this working session. I sure did. Uh, and Brad, I'll talk to you later. Sounds good. Bye-bye.